Position tolerance part three. We're going to talk about bonus tolerance. But first we're going to talk about donuts. Because the concept of maximum material condition, when people see this circle M, it's not that bad, but it, it, it's kind of confusing. So let's talk about donuts for a second. If I offer up a kid, a kid wants a donut, I say, okay, here, how about you have that donut? Kid's gonna be ticked. They're gonna be like, wait a minute, no, I, I want that donut. But if you ask him why, it's like, well, that donut's bigger. I want more donut. And that, that's pretty obvious. But if we bring in this donut, it's a little harder to describe. Because he says, well, of course you take this one over that one. There, there's some of the donut missing. But I could say, but I made it bigger. He said, well, no, you didn't. I said, yes, I did. The hole is bigger. Yeah, but there's less donut there. If I'm going to maximize my donut, maximize my snack, this is the maximum, and it has the smallest hole. And that's where people get confused sometimes. On the outside, okay, this donut has a bigger outside than this one does. It's the maximum diameter. But this one has a maximum diameter on the inside, but it's the, there's less donut. So when we see a circle M, I want you to think of a maximum donut condition so that anytime you see a hole, you know it's the smallest hole that is the most material, the most donut that is there, okay? So the outside, the circle M means the biggest, and on the inside, the circle M means the smallest hole. Biggest peg, smallest hole is the circle M, okay? So when you see that, think of the donut example. So let's set those aside. Now if we go back to lesson one and two, use the dartboard, and we had our, we simplified the dartboard with a bullseye. All those calculations that we did, figuring out the where the peg was going to land and it stays inside of that hole, all that stuff was done based on the maximum donut, that maximum condition. But once our, uh, once our donut gets nibbled on, we get to add this bonus tolerance, okay? So every amount that our donut gets nibbled, we get to take whatever came off of the donut and we get to put it right here. Now, you can't find this amount on the print. What's on the print is the bullseye and the size that the donut has to be. If you want to know how big this this bonus is that we get to, we don't just have to hit the bullseye anymore, we get this little extra extra area for our dart to come in and land. If our dart is uh, smaller than usual, it gets to land in this larger bonus area. But you won't find that on the print. You actually have to pick up each part and measure it, and each part will have a different amount of bonus tolerance. I think that's where sometimes people get confused. They say, what's the bonus tolerance? And they want to go look at the print to find it. And yeah, you need some information off the print, but to really find it out, you're basically, the only thing you need off the print is how, what's the maximum donut condition, and then how much less, how much came off of each edge that I get to put on here. Now, realistically, I'm going to be looking at the maximum size of the donut, maybe I, I zero it, and then I look and see how much smaller this is, and then I distribute that on both sides. Or if I'm doing the math, I'm going to take I'm going to uh, take whatever the dis difference is and add it to the bullseye for my total 
uh, for, for this total tolerance. But I don't want to get too deep into that. Uh, so let's put this off to the side and see how that applies to our examples. So we had, remember we had a, uh, our original peg example. This was our dart, this was our, or, or peg. And now this, this, everything was done with a maximum, maximum condition, this guy, maximum condition, all, everything that was calculated when we just had the, uh, and we just had the bullseye was done for a maximum condition donut. Smallest hole, uh, biggest outside diameter. So once we, let's look at our peg, once we take away some of that diameter, whatever I've chewed off, I'm hoping this is still showing up in the, uh, in the camera, uh, Whatever I've chewed off of the edge gets added as bonus to my bullseye. Okay? That measurement is going to be the same. And why? You can see it. When I come to the edge of the bullseye, I'm dropping in here, edge of the bullseye. Hey, look, I'm nowhere near my boundary. My boundary is the same. That virtual, that virtual boundary is the same. So now, because my peg is smaller, I get to go further out. And look, that peg is now right up against that boundary. And it's the same thing with the hole. Here's my, uh, my original hole, but I've opened it up. It's not the maximum donut anymore. Okay? I've gone from this donut to that one, and whatever I chewed away on the inside, who knows how somebody chewed away on the inside, whatever. Whatever I chewed away on the inside also gets to be added. It's in its own. You don't get to do, uh, it's, it's not necessarily the same amount, probably won't be. But when I'm verifying if the hole is in position or not, I do exactly like I did with the outside, but now I'm dealing it with the inside. Whatever got chewed away gets added to my bullseye. So I come in here and go, okay, it moved this much, and now I get to put that much onto my bullseye as my bonus tolerance. Again, not specified on the print. I have to take each individual part and measure it relative to the max and say, how much bigger is it than max? And that's how much I get to add. And when you're doing the math as an inspector, it's okay, this is basically zero I've grown it by this much and whatever my maximum material condition, because I have an M on my print, whatever my bullseye size is, I add that difference. Graphically, it's kind of neat to see that, okay, if I look at it one side at a time, whatever got eaten away, I get to place right there. It just makes it easier to understand. So hopefully that's making sense. So remember, the maximum donut condition has the biggest outside, which is easy to understand, but the smallest hole. And it's how much we deviate from that. That's what this circle M means, that when we deviate from that maximum donut, that maximum material condition, that that's how much bonus tolerance we get to add. That bonus that's not on the print is something we figure out on a per part basis as we're picking up our parts out of the bin, whether we just made them, whether we're inspecting them, we measure how much it deviates and that's how much bonus we get. Hopefully that makes sense. Now folks, my goal here is to provide a free gd &T resource to help people learn, um, but I'm finding out it takes money to buy the supplies, buy the donuts, buy the paper, set up the lights and the camera and all the video editing stuff. If you would like to contribute to my effort, I'm putting my uh, PayPal address in the show notes if you want to help fund some of the stuff. I'm going to continue to do it anyway, um, but if you can help, I'd sure appreciate it.